Hi everyone, Victor here again and in today's lesson we're going to be looking at how to set permissions and to manage permissions in OpenShift. When it comes to permissions in OpenShift, OpenShift uses RBAC that is role-based access control method. RBAC is basically a method of restricting access based on the rules that are assigned to individual users or groups in the cluster. And of course, rules are a set of permissions assigned to users or groups to be able to perform certain API operations. And these rules are added or assigned to a user via rule binding. So assignment of users or groups to a rule is called rule, rule binding or binding. So basically, rules are bound to users or groups and the bound or the binding of these users or groups to rules is role binding or binding. In OpenShift, there are basically two kinds or two groups of rules. We have the cluster rule and we also have the lookout rule. The cluster rule is a type of rule that users or groups with this kind of role will be able to manage the OpenShift cluster at the cluster level. So it cuts across the entire cluster. And for local role, users or groups with this role can manage OpenShift at a project level. And by default, OpenShift comes with some set of default cluster rules that can be assigned locally or to the entire cluster. And these rules are the admin role, we have the basic user role, we have the cluster admin role, we have the cluster status role, the cluster reader, the edit role, the self provisional role, and the view role. So um, this is an official document from Red Hat OpenShift. And I'll be dropping the link to this documentation in the description box below. So let's uh, briefly talk about this role. So for the admin role, um, when you give a user or when you assign a user or a group to this role, the user or group will have the right to view any resource in the project and modify any resource in the project except for quota. And for um, basic user role, a user or a group with this role can get basic information about projects and users. And for cluster admin role, this is a super user role. This, any user or group with this role can perform any action on the cluster. And for the cluster status role, this, a user with this role will be able to view the status information of the cluster. For the cluster reader role, for this, for a user with this kind of role, they can get or view most of the objects, but they cannot modify them. And for the edit role, a user or a group with this kind of role can modify most objects in a project. And for self-provisional role, a user or a group with this kind of role can create their own project. And for the view role, a user or a group with this kind of role cannot edit, they cannot write, but they can view the object in the project. When, when you assign a group or user a cluster kind of role and also a local kind of role, the cluster role always takes precedence over the local role. And also from Red Hat perspective, and even in any RBAC methodology, it is wise and recommended not to delete the default rules. If you want to create a customized role, one can copy from the default rules and edit the template to suit what you want to customize, but don't delete or edit the default rules itself. So having understood the types of default rules we have, and like we did in the previous lesson or like we've established that, for you to be able to perform cluster operations, you need to be you need to log in as a cluster admin. And 
as a cluster administrator you can then give you know um any role to any user you wish to give roles to so currently on this openshift cluster we have two users that have the privilege of the cluster admin role one is the shared user which is the keep admin and the other one is the technic user we created in our previous lesson and we were able to assign the cluster admin privilege to this user so then i need to log in as either of these two users so for me to log in as the technic user or the cube adm user so let's even log in as a technic user so i can just say also login user technic password password right so that's my cluster anyways it's it's becoming okay it's stable now so we've been able to log in as the technic user and with this user that has the cluster admin privilege i can then assign roles to other users or to other groups on the system and the way to assign role especially when you're assigning the cluster administrative role you can always use the oc adm policy command so as the administrator you would always use the oc adm policy command and as the project administrator or non cluster admin you can always use the oc policy command so that's the difference you cannot use the OC ADM policy command as a non cluster administrator. So now, if you want to, for example, add the cluster admin role to a user, you can then say OC ADM policy, followed by, let's see if the double tab would work here. Okay, so the, the double tab is not working. Because there are a couple of subcommands after the OC ADM policy command. So to add a cluster admin role, so I can say OC ADM policy, then followed by the add cluster role to user, then followed by the cluster role. So let's say I want to add the cluster admin role cluster admin role to the user tech need we already added this role anyways so let's just do this again let's see what we're going to have so it's telling us that the user tech need has been bound to this cluster admin role all right so that's how you are going to add users or bind users to roles if you want this user to be able to just you know view to, to just view information or object then you can add the view rule to this user so if i add the view rule to this user that means that this user will be able to view information or object on the cluster and if i also want to remove the cluster admin role or even remove any role from a from a user you can also use the OC ADM policy command and this time around this is going to be remove cluster role from user so I'm going to specify the cluster role so this is going to be the cluster admin role from the user technique so let's do this so you can see that the this role has been unbound or removed from the user tech need and for me to for me to bind this role back to the user tech need like i've said i would need to log in as the cluster administrator so i'm just going to log in as the cube admin so then i can bind this role back to the tech need user so I'm just going to say add cluster role to user cluster admin technique. 
So I've been able to bind or add this role to the technique user. So that's how you're going to, you know, add roles and remove roles from users. For a better understanding, let's have a look at this table. You can see authorization object here and on the authorization object we have rules we have rules and bindings and of course rules are set of permitted verbs on set of objects and rules are collection of rules and bindings like i've said is the association between the users or groups and a rule and if you also look at the arrow back level here in OpenShift, we have two types of arrow back level. We have the cluster arrow back and we have the local arrow back. And the cluster arrow back, like I've mentioned to, is associated to the entire cluster, while the local arrow back is associated to the project. And finally, if you look at the cluster row binding commands, you can see examples of cluster row binding commands and local row binding commands. So, for example, if you use the command OCADM policy, so this is the important um, command here that I want you to take note of. So, if you say add cluster row to user, so meaning that you're doing a cluster row binding. So the difference between the cluster row binding and the local row binding is that for cluster, there is always cluster row and for local, it's just, it just carries only row. So for example, if you say OCADM add cluster row to user, OCADM remove cluster row from user. So you can see that the difference between here and here is the cluster. So here, for example, you would say OCADM policy add row to user. So this is a local row which is just associated to the project, while this is associated to the entire cluster. And like I said, this carries cluster row, while this doesn't carry cluster row. And if you look at the explanation here, they are self-explanatory. And of course, if you say OCADM add cluster row to user meaning that you're binding a specific row which in this case um we don't have any role yet so if for example if you if you if we should take the example we used in you know um, while we're explaining let's say cluster admin so meaning that the role is going to be cluster admin and the user could be tech need or whatever user so the explanation too is um, is very clear enough. This is going to this binds a specific role to a specific user for all projects in a cluster, and this removes a specific role from a specific user from all projects in a cluster. So I bet I I want to understand or I want to believe rather that you now understand this better. A very important command you should also know. Is the who can command so for example if you want to know users who can create pods you can just say OC ADM so I can just type and say OC ADM policy who can so let's see if the double tab will work so the double tab is not working here as well so you know we can say we can you know get pods we can you know delete pods we can we can create pods we can you know any form of action so let's just check the users that can create pods in this cluster or that can get pods in this cluster so if i say enter you can see the you can even see the groups that can get pods that is that can list pods on the cluster you can see the different users that can you know list pods on the cluster and most of them are even um, system or service account users
so if we want to we can as well say okay um let's these users who can create who can create deployment for example deployment so you can see the list of users that can create deployment so the idea is oc adm policy who can followed by you know the various objects that the various actions on objects that we've seen or that we've been doing in our previous lesson so it sh this shouldn't be an issue if we also want to know or list the users or groups that are bound to a role in the cluster we can also do that so for example i can list i can list the users that are bound to the self provisional cluster role so to do that i can say oc get cluster role binding cluster role binding output to wide and i can say grep so we're looking for the um, role which is um, self self provisional. Self provisional. So now you can see that this group, which is system authenticated auth group, is bound to the self provisioners role well we expect this to happen because from the word self provisional it means that users can self provision their project so every user in the cluster can be able to create his or her own project except you remove this role from this group then no user will be able to create or self provision their project so having understood all of this we will look at how to create how to bind users to roles remove users from roles different types of roles how to you know do all this permission management in the next lesson with examples so thank you for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to this channel like share share comment when you do this, you would encourage us to do more. So thanks once more for watching. Bye for now.